Good morning. I am so, so, so excited about today's video. I have not stopped smiling since Lewis, my friend, uh, has agreed to do a B video with me. Uh, so a little bit about that. Lewis is a beekeeper. He married a girl that my kids went to high school with. And so I discovered him. He's really, really funny. You've got to go follow him. Um, but he loves to cook and he has bees and he's young, which I think is phenomenal. Um, and so today I asked him if I could video his, him about his bees. Um, I am very interested in bees. I always have been. Um, love learning about them. I have sat under speakers um, and I just, I'm fascinated by them and I really think I want to move into beekeeping. Uh, so I asked him if he would be willing to let me come see his bees and learn from him. Um, and he agreed, ah, I am so excited. So I am actually heading to his house right now and we are going to not only learn from Lewis about his bees, but we are also going to get to see a swarm that is actively happening in his trees. I am not 100% sure how formal or great this video quality is going to be. Uh, I'm using my iPhone and a simple tripod, no microphones, no flashy equipment, nothing like that, um, in an effort to be as, I guess, non-reflective or whatever as possible. So the reason I wanted to come to you this morning and ahead of me seeing him is <clears throat> I wanted to let you know, you know, I'm not sure how the quality of this video is going to be. Um, I am just using my iPhone and a tripod, but probably just holding my phone and I'm sure it's going to be a little shaky. Um, I'm going to be around bees and want to make sure I capture everything. So I apologize well in advance for this. Um, and yeah, so I'm sure I'm going to be very excited and probably very annoying <laughs> over the video quality. So I apologize for all of this in advance. I am just so excited. So excited. Um, so we're heading to his house now. We're about two minutes away. So we're coming for you, Lewis. So as I am putting this video together for you, for the bees, I wanted to explain a little bit about how you are going to see the different series. Um, it is one fluid video for three and a half hours. And so I am breaking it out into different segments for you. Um, and on this first segment, I know um, it's going to be a lot of just conversation. Lewis has so much information. He is a walking bee um, extraordinaire. He, he knows so much. And so, you know, I realize that it's not a lot of action, although he does show you what he's talking about. Um, in the initial video, in this initial video, um, it is just a lot of back and forth, me asking him questions, him sharing, um, what we are going to see in the subsequent videos. And so I wanted to explain a little bit about how this goes. Um, it's, it's, a little bit long this first one because he is so thorough in his explanation of the video and the information is so good um, as I'm listening to it back after you know I'm editing the video and I'm listening to it back again there are still little pieces there are little pieces of information that I didn't catch the first time or after seeing all of the things that we looked at in the hives, um, it makes sense now. And so I am so grateful for these videos and I'm so excited to share them with you. So I am going to go ahead and start the video now where um, he is going to explain all about the bees, all about the stages of life of a bee, 
about how he takes care of the bees, et cetera, et cetera. So I hope you enjoy this video. I know you will. Um, and I hope you will come back and check out the, the rest of the series um, where we actually look in a beehive and, you know, it's just, it's so good. So I thank you so much for watching and let's get on with the video. Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. I have my friend Lewis here who we actually just met today, but I have followed him for a while on Instagram. Um, he has bees and we are standing in front of his beehives. Four of them? Five of them. Four of them? Four. Four beehives. Maybe and soon to be five. Yes. So today is the greatest gift I'm giving you guys and myself. Uh, we are going to talk all things bees. He actually has something really cool that happened kind of yesterday yesterday okay and so he's going to show us so tell us a little bit about you how you got into this i've had bees i want to say this is my sixth year okay. going into beekeeping um I, I don't know i was just kind of intrigued by the bees. bees yeah. yeah and um i was having a conversation with a coworker of mine at lunch one day and a woman that i work with overheard us talking about it and she actually kept bees oh, and so she wow. was like hey there's this beginning beekeepers course uh with alamance county oh. um you should sign up they do it every january every year oh, um i missed that <laughs> so but i have you <laughs> yeah um and it, you know this is kind of like the time where most beekeepers get started if mm -hmm. it's your um you know if you've never done it before and you want to get into it this time of year kind of March, April is where most people will buy their oh, first bees okay. um, and, and jump in. So oh, that's awesome. Um, I got my start with two hives and had no idea what I was doing and lost both of them the first oh, year that shoot. I ever had bees. And so I doubled down the next year and I said, um, I'm going to get four just because. Uh, and Kirby, you know, is a little, I think two is enough. Kirby but... is his wife. She's <laughs> precious. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so I, I had four and then, um, it kind of grew from there. I've had anywhere from one hive, uh, all the way up to 12 last summer. And depending on how good of care I take of them, I guess. Uh, so, th so bees are, you have to take care of them. You can't just have a box, put bees in it and leave them. Uh, there, there are mm -hmm. different opinions about that. Okay. Um, for yes. you and your experience. Some people say, you know, you got to let the bees do what the bees do. And then other people you know you have to treat them for mites you have to uh, yeah it's okay. it's helpful if you feed them at certain times of year um really it's it's all about keeping the population of bees up mm -hmm. and uh, keeping the population of the mites down ah, so. okay and lewis has a great um instagram page and i actually saw you post that i think um you had a picture of the mite and you were like this is the nemesis of a hive yeah yeah so yeah he posts a lot of stuff on there you should follow him okay so tell me what we're looking at here so this is either my second or my third swarm of the year um i'm not 100 percent sure because unless i see it happen sometimes you know they'll when they swarm they'll come out and they'll the queen will kind of land on a, a branch or a tree usually pretty close by to where they the hive they come out of at some point in time during the year, whenever there's a lot of resources available, right now is perfect for them. Um, a lot of the, most of the honey and nectar and pollen they get comes from trees and not necessarily a lot of flowers and stuff. Um, but right now, you know, the maple trees start blooming in late February. It's a good pollen source for them. The tulip poplar trees are probably the biggest source of nectar really? for our area. And they're okay. about to start blooming. Okay. Um, so. As you can see, there's a hive with one box, a hive with four boxes, a hive with five or six boxes. Um, in the wintertime, I always take them down to one deep box okay. and one medium box. That's okay. just my preference on how I like to overwinter my hives. Okay. Uh, it provides them enough space to have enough food to make it through winter. Okay. But it also uh, is not too much space where uh, different pests can get in and, and kind of disrupt things for us. Sure. So in the springtime, the queen will start, She'll sometimes she'll take a break in the winter of laying eggs, um, and they will kind of just keep, stay in a real tight ball to keep warm and, and move around the hive in that ball a little Don't bit. do they vibrate too? They do. Like, they, they keep the hive, I think, around 99 degrees. How cool is that? By their body movement, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay. Um, so they keep it nice and warm in there. And uh, some people say, you know, the more space they have, the harder it is for them to keep warm. So oh. that's why you kind of shrink them down in the wintertime. Okay. Um, but 
they the queen will lay eggs based on the length of the day. Oh. So when the sun kind of starts, you know, days start getting longer and whatnot, that's kind of the queen's trigger to wow. spring is on its way. You know, wow. I need to start laying some more that eggs. That's so cool. Um, so what happens is they, you know, they will double, triple, quadruple the population inside the hive. Oh, because she's laying so many eggs. Right. Okay. So if you only have two boxes and she's laying a bunch of eggs and they're bringing in all this pollen and nectar, well, they run out of space. Okay. So when they swarm, it's actually a sign of a really healthy hive. So, so it's bees from your box that have... Yes. Oh, okay. I thought it was like a somebody else's that got angry and moved. I mean, you hear a swarm. Okay. That is it, really fascinating. It's it's funny that, you know, when you hear swarm, it's kind of like an angry term. Yeah. But that's actually when they're, like, they're most docile. Really? You're the least likely to be stung when you're dealing with a swarm. Okay. When they see they're running out of space, they will start to produce a new queen. So they're like, hey, we got a lot of resources here. Um, we, we have enough bees to essentially make a new queen and then half of the hive, roughly, half of the hive will leave with the old queen oh. and then the new queen will hatch and she'll come out and she'll go on a mating flight and she'll come back and then so that's kind of like if you think of the hive as one organism that's how they reproduce okay so they kind of divide themselves in half and now one turns into two so if you lose a swarm you have lost some oh, of your bees God. okay so what like what are what are they doing right now? Are they just sitting there? They are. They are waiting for. They send scouts out. These are scout bees from that swarm. Then I want to keep the hive up there, because my hope is that that swarm, these scouts will go back to that swarm and, and say, "Hey, we found this really cool place to live. You guys should come check it out." And that swarm will just come all at once. And really. Thousands of bees will just rush into the Have you the hive. seen this happen? Yeah. Really? It's pretty, that's probably one of the most fascinating things to see. Um, you're kind of standing in the middle of a bee tornado. Yeah. And it's really loud, loud buzzing. Um, and within probably three to four minutes, thousands of bees are in there and you just wouldn't even know that anything just happened. So how will you go, how are you going to figure this out? How, what are you going to do to figure out if, there is already a swarm in there or if those are scout bees um i may have to get a taller ladder but i'm gonna climb that ladder uh, i'm gonna take that trap down i'm gonna open it and just kind of look for volume how many okay. bees are in there if there's a ton of bees in there it's already a swarm that's moved in cool i can move them to a regular hive and put the trap back up is that one too that is another swarm trap i actually put that up this morning because I was worried that this was already a swarm inside. So you're already thinking ahead. Right. So wow. if I start to see a lot of scout activity on that one, then that would kind of also lead me to believe there's already a, a hive in here. Um, and again, I mean, w when a swarm happens, it's a matter of minutes. You right. Know, they, if, you don't, oh. if you don't watch it happen. I'm on video. Um, you have no idea what hive it came from. But if you're out here when it does happen, there's just... And there's no prediction. No. There's none. If you, I'll kind of show you when we get into some of the hives. Okay. Some, some kind of things, they're signs that they might swarm. Last week when I, I caught my first swarm of the year, I did a check to try to figure out which hive it came from. And I noticed a couple of things that kind of led me to believe like, eh, I think they're probably going to swarm again soon. So. So what sort of things are you looking for? There are queen cells. Whenever... There are two occasions where a hive will make a new queen. The first is if they're superseding, which means basically they no longer feel that their current queen is doing a good job. They want to overthrow her, get yeah. her out. They need right. a new queen. Um, Done with her. So they will build a, a queen cell. Usually it's in the middle of a frame. And um, they'll build more than one up to a couple dozen. Have you seen, you've, you've seen this happen. Yeah. Like you can tell when they start doing that. Yeah. Wow. You'll be able to see today. Oh, wow. Um, the other occasion is if they're going to swarm, they'll build queen cells along the bottom of a frame. And again, they'll build anywhere from like two or three to 15, 20. Um, normally what happens is when the first queen of that bunch hatches, she will go around and kill the other queens. Can't have more than one queen. Yeah. Right. So, right. Um, Sometimes they will swarm and then they'll throw another a secondary swarm and you can check to see do, does the queen have enough room to lay eggs. 
They're bringing in all this pollen and nectar. They're storing it in the same cells that she's trying to lay eggs in. Mm. So if they've got a bunch of frames just full of pollen and nectar and she has nowhere to lay, then that's kind of a sign to her. It's like, to we got to move on here. Right. Like this, this is a good place for us and we're doing well. But if we split in half, you know, they'll. So she's telling them like, all right. Time. Well, I think time. I think the worker bees make the decision. They do. Okay. Because they're the ones that have to kind of build the cells. Um, though they're in a different shape, so okay. you, and you'll get to see that too. What are we looking at, like right now? And are these the worker bees that are, you know, out? Yep. So the bees go through different stages of of uh, employment, I guess you could call it. Okay. Uh, when a bee first hatches, it is its main job is to clean. So it'll clean the cell it came out of and then start cleaning the cells around it. After that, then typically they'll move to like nursery workers. So they'll take care of the larva, they'll feed them, they'll, um, you know, keep them warm, all that stuff. And then they'll move on to uh, security. They'll kind of hang out at the front, make sure nobody's coming in that shouldn't be coming in. So can you see them, the security bees? At it's really evident at night. Okay. If you come out here with a flashlight, you can see just like a line of bees at the entrance. Really? And they're just hanging out. They're not flying. Yep. Wow. Um, and then at the end of their life cycle is when they become worker bees where they'll go out and forage and um, try to find pollen, try to find nectar. Uh, you might be able to see some like bright yellow on some of the legs coming yeah, in. Yeah, from the pollen? Yep. And that's... they bunch it all up on the back of their legs and they bring it in and they get it in these nice tight balls and they pack it into the cells. Pollen is basically a, piece, a, a bee's protein source. Okay. And then the nectar is like their carbohydrate Their carbo source. Okay. So. And so these are the worker bees? What you're seeing flying right now, they're worker bees. Worker yep. bees, okay. There may be a few drones mixed in. Drones are pretty much useless. They don't do any work. Um, <laughs> they don't even feed themselves. They get fed by the other oh. bees. Um, so what's their what's their purpose? They mate with other queens. Oh, typical men, right? Right. Do any good in the hive? <laughs> they just take up space and eat food, and then go off and, and mate with other queens. Okay. Uh, I can just see a lot of bees coming in with a lot of bright yellow on their on their legs. So you here. know what you're looking for. Yep. Um, and the grass is kind of in the way a little bit, but don't they go to like the bee goes to one source and back over and over and over? They They're do. not they like going from flower to flower to flower. They will wear it out. They'll go, they'll go anywhere from uh, two to five miles in a radius around their hive. Um, and they're usually on the lookout for large patches. Okay. So, um, I mean, I'm not saying don't plant beautiful flowers in your landscape. But, sure. Um, a lot of times what they'll find are, you know, just massive plots of uh, this time of year trees mm -hmm. is their main source. Um, you'll see, I mean, you'll see some, a clover is a... Yes, in people, the in the landscape, in the grass. Right, people hate clover in their in their lawns, but and I'm just like, I'm going to let anything Yeah, everything that's grow. where I've gotten to, because I, you know, I understand they love that. And grass, you know, gr typical, like your fescues and your bermudas and things like that, they're not really producing flowers, yeah. um, so they don't really produce a lot of... Right. But, uh, like a, a vegetable garden, for example, is great for the middle of summer, August, July, it's so hot and dry. There's not really a lot of other things blooming. The so trees that's are already like done. Your squash and your well, tomatoes. Squash, cucumbers, cucumbers. Um, sweet corn. They will actually collect pollen from the tassels of sweet corn. Really? Which is actually kind. Of, it's pretty fun to watch. That's cool. See, I really do need bees. There you go. Don't you agree? Yeah. Yeah. You should get some hives. <laughs>
I want to thank you so much for watching this first video. I know that it was it was so good and I, I hope that you got as much enjoyment and knowledge out of it as I did. Um, and I can't wait to see your reaction on this one and the upcoming videos. Um, please come back and check and I'm going to be posting these weekly, um, but please come back and watch them. And if you like the video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe. I would love to have you coming back for each video and I would love to hear your thoughts. So I hope you have a great day. Go get your hands dirty. Take care, everybody.